finish I'm going to use a polyurethane and uh, for the building the shadows I'm going to use artist oils. When I put the finish on it doesn't necessarily have to be all ready for finish because I do some carving when I'm putting the finish because I'm seeing how it takes it then when the varnish is wet I can still go in with my tools and I can still carve those areas. We're getting ready to varnish here and uh, I'm going to be using the uh, Helmsman uh, it's an indoor outdoor varnish polyurethane it's a clear satin. I always use a bristle brush the bristle brush has got enough surface tension that it will break the bubbles as it comes through. So I am going to apply the varnish right to the carving and uh, I'm going to do it clear. Then I've got my artist oil. Uh, this is a uh, burnt umber and I put it on a little card here. and. Uh, so I'm using this brush to apply the varnish. This is the one, uh, this is also an oil painting brush, kind of stiff. And that's what I'm going to then, into the wet varnish, I'm going to start putting the shadows in. After applying a good coat of varnish to the back and the edges, now I'm starting just to put the clear varnish on the face here. And you can kind of see how the capillary action on the end grain here making the trees look darker. And uh, just to show you that you can continue to carve as uh, you're varnishing uh, and then carve right through the varnish. Let's say we have an imperfection. I can see one right here at the top of the mountain and I can carve that right off. So right through the wet varnish it doesn't hurt the chisels, it doesn't hurt the carving and just got right down through the bottom of that imperfection. Then I just take the paper towel, wipe it off. Little varnish on the chisel is not going to hurt the chisel at all. Then I just go back and re-varnish that area. So you can kind of see right here where that reflection of the tree is when I made those cuts now the capillary action sucks that varnish in and it makes the reflection okay now that's all clear varnish now what I'm going to do is start building my shadows so now I can take the burnt umber and I can just start building the shadows and then I blend all the shadows in with the bigger brush with the varnish on it. Oil paints and polyurethane varnish mix very well. So I can extend that. I know I had a little bit too much paint right there on the chest, but I can move that paint around by just using the varnish. If I wanted to create a little bit more texture in around that rock, let's say where that rock is meeting the water, I'll take my, uh, I'll just take this here, number three gouge, and I will cut some lines in there right at the base of that rock, right here, and here also. Just a little bit more reflection from those rocks. Notice I didn't take any stock out. I just cut it with the corner. And there we just, more of the subconscious, kind of seeing a little bit more reflection of the rock right there. So probably just a little subtle uh, separation. Uh, take a little bit of the burnt umber and right where these two mountains, the mountain ranges, uh, just separate them a little bit with a little bit more shadow. And maybe just some of these other areas as dark as that one there was. And the foothills. We can go to the top and the bottom of the foothills a little bit. That would uh, help separate them a little bit. Just smudge it around and work it in. 
I think I want a little bit deeper shadow on the belly of this bear. Take a little bit more paint. A little touch of color on that nose.